I've always wondered what really makes me the way that I am. I'm gay. Fabulously gay. And I'm trying to figure out how men like me could have survived evolution. Filmmaker Bryce Sage has had a big question on his mind ever since he came out of the closet. How is evolution compatible with the existence of gay men? We've definitely survived the dog-eat-dog -dog world of evolution. So why haven't gay men become extinct? Like the dinosaurs who used to roam around this place. I may not know much about that natural selection business, but what I do know is we gay guys don't reproduce, and we seem to have stuck around for a real long time. So why haven't we become extinct? Bryce has spent years wondering about this gay conundrum. Darwin, you've got some explaining to do. There's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. When Bryce Sage was growing up in rural Ontario, he knew he was different. He came out of the closet at age 19 after he moved to Toronto. He's comfortable with who he is now, but he's often wondered why he's attracted to men rather than women. I'd say that ever since I even started to question, you know, who I was in terms of my sexuality, I've wondered, was I born this way? There was always this burning question. I'm probably not going to reproduce, so why am I gay? Why is anyone gay? Bryce sets out to find a biological explanation for his sexuality. His first stop is Chicago's Northwestern University, where he's meeting with key members of the Human Sexuality Lab. So what do you guys do here? We study various aspects of human sexual orientation, such as women's sexuality. We've done studies with twins. We've even studied gay dancers. Gay dancers? Yeah, it turns out that if you do ballet, you're more likely to be gay. Well, somebody had to figure that out. So what kind of research are you guys doing now? So right now we're doing studies of sexual psychophysiology of men's sexual orientations. Okay, so if you're like gay, straight, or bi. Uh, no, those are sexual identity labels. So that's something that a person tells you they are. Bryce has already told the scientists that he's gay, but they want more than self-reporting. There's a measure of sexual arousal that we use called penile plethysmography that doesn't rely on self-report, where we measure a man's erections to different kinds of erotic stimuli. So it's kind of like a polygraph for your penis then? Exactly. Who'd have thought I'd have to do a test to determine if I'm gay or not? I thought that part was pretty apparent. So how's this gonna happen? Okay, so what you'll be doing is you're gonna be watching um, a couple of uh, gay scenes, you'll also be watching a couple of uh, lesbian scenes, and while you watch them, I need you to um, have that gauge on, you'll be uh, completely still. And are we sure this will be big enough? Um, it'll be pretty snug on your penis, <laughs> and it'll stretch when you get aroused at grips. By measuring the blood flow to Bryce's penis, the PPG will determine if Bryce is attracted to men or women. I'm all ready. <sighs> that wasn't weird at all. So what did the test say about my pee pee? So if you look here, this red line is what your penis was doing throughout the entire uh, assessment. This is when you were watching lesbian video. And you can see here your arousal is pretty much flat across the whole thing. Now this is what you did when you were watching one of the gay sex scenes. You can see that within the first minute or so, you have this dramatic increase in your genital arousal and that stays up there for the entire time that video is playing. Countless studies have demonstrated that men's sexual orientations are their arousal patterns, really. In other words, that if you're, if you're homosexual, that you're strongly aroused uh, by men, and attractive men, and that you experience little to no arousal to uh, attractive women. So this says that I'm 100% unequivocally homosexual. That's right. And that I was born that way. No, 
we would need more data in order to answer the question of whether or not you were born gay. What can we do to figure that out? One way we might get more information about that is to see where your erections are coming from, which is of course your brain. I guess that makes sense. What's going on downstairs must be controlled by something going on upstairs. I need to figure out what that is. All right, so we're gonna go over a little bit of the safety procedure. Okay. Make sure that you don't have any metal on you before you go into the magnet. I'm pretty sure I'm okay. All right, we'll check that out. Um, after that, we'll put you in a very sexy hospital gown. Fitted, of course, right? Yes, very, very fitted. So this is our scanner. We're gonna put you in it and we're gonna show you four second clips of erotic material. Four seconds? Are you sure that's enough to measure anything? Unlike our last study where we measured your genital arousal, this time we're gonna look for deeper pathways in the brain. Before arousal happens in the genitals, it first occurs in the brain. This scan may show that Bryce's arousal patterns are something more than a choice. I've got an itch on my nose, can I scotch it? The focus here is the limbic system, the parts of the brain known to regulate instinctive sexual responses. These scans may reveal some clues about the biological nature of Bryce's sexuality. All right, looks like we're all finished. I'm gonna come in and get you. I think all these vaginas might have turned me. Just warning you. Although the MRI is complete, Bryce's results won't be available for a couple of days. Sure Bryce and his brother are certainly different, but are these differences the result of biology, upbringing, or a mix of both? Got a message here. My results are in in Chicago. For what? My brain results. I'm gonna find it if I'm gay. <laughs> I think we have enough evidence on that. <laughs> So what am I looking at? So what we're looking at is a vision of your brain going from side to side. And anything that's red is a part of your brain that was more active when you were looking at pictures and videos of men relative to when you were looking at pictures and videos of women. So what part of the brain is reacting? So this is the limbic system here, which is this ancient sort of primordial part of the human brain. The limbic system is where our most primal thoughts originate. It governs subconscious processes like hunger and the sex drive. This is the part of the brain uh, that's responsible for the four Fs, which is feeding, fighting, fleeing, or mating. But that doesn't start with an F. So yeah, I'll let you figure that one out. From an evolutionary perspective, these instinctive parts of the brain are considered to be ancient. This primitive brain existed long before the development of the thinking brain that allows us to control our instincts. So what does this say about sexuality being like set or a choice? So it suggests that there is something hardwired about your sexuality here when we're just looking at your responses to men versus women. From studies like these, as well as the other theories that we have and all of the other data, male sexual orientation is something that is set from birth, if not earlier. It seems like the science does say, I was more than likely born gay. It's not exactly the biggest surprise in the world, but it's definitely reassuring. The thing is, it doesn't say what made me gay to begin with. And why me? Why not my older brother, Corey? 